Okay, we're back to uh, part six of the NetHack Overexplained series. And tonight I'm hoping to tackle the Valkyrie quest. So um, we already visited the first level of the quest. We found the quest portal. I think in this dungeon, the quest portal is on the same, in the same level as the big room, which is not guaranteed, um, but it is possible because they do overlap. So the, we can draw it here. The quest is another branch, uh, starts from the portal and then it goes down, um, a few more levels, um, to the quest nemesis. So here we can just put the, uh, this is the quest here. And there are several levels to the quest. It depends on which class you're playing. And then at the end of the, the quest, we get to the quest nemesis, uh, which in this case is Lord Search Suter, um, who's a fire giant. And um, so that's what our goal for tonight. Before we get there, we have a couple of things I'd like to do here in the castle. Um, so first of all, just taking a look here, we have, um, let's see what we have for scrolls here. We have three cursed unlabeled scrolls. Um, and in addition, we have an additional cursed scroll of genocide. Do we have another? I might have had another uh, scroll of genocide as well. Let's take a quick look here. And we had charging. That's what we, we had charging already. So we have a bunch of charging. I think we only have the one genocide scroll. So the next thing we're going to talk about is nurse dancing. It's not 100% necessary to do nurse dancing, but it certainly improves your survivability. Uh, I generally will do some nurse dancing around this point of the game and it's, it's a way to increase your max hp um now i usually like to do nurse dancing right here in this room of the castle because you have an elberth square and a scare monster scroll um before i do nurse dancing i usually like to genocide liches so liches are definitely have belong here on the list of late game dangers they're also very annoying. And uh, nurse dancing, as I'll show you, requires taking off all your armor. And that is going to remove our source of magic resistance, which is going to make liches even more dangerous. So a lich could potentially spawn on the castle level, teleport into the room where you are uh, doing your nurse dancing, and then uh, ruin your day, potentially up to even casting the uh, touch of death on you, uh, depending on whether or not they spawn with it. Arch liches would spawn with it. So um, I'm going to put liches here. I'm just going to put um, capital L. So they're a good candidate for uh, genocide. Yeah, regardless, they are annoying. They can ruin your day by cursing your items. Uh, by summoning a bunch of dangerous creatures around you. So they're a really good candidate for uh, genocide re regardless. And I usually like to do this before I do nurse dancing. So we don't have a uncursed or blessed uh, scroll of genocide, so we have to write one. But we do actually have two magic markers. This one is 83 charges. Um, the other one might be yeah it's unidentified so we don't know how many charges the other one has so we can go ahead and take out some blank paper here we actually have a blessed unlabeled scroll so i'll go ahead and take that out and use that first and so we can use the magic marker to write any scrolls that you we have already identified if you are a wizard you can even write ones that you haven't identified yet which is a very powerful ability makes wizards one of the more powerful characters in the game, but also uh, 
very difficult to ascend with for, for new characters, particularly compared to a Valkyrie. So taking a look here, any of these scrolls in our discovery list, and I used the back slash key for this discovery list. So anything under scrolls here that is identified, um, so we'd say scroll of, scroll called scare monster is not identified. That's just named. So we would actually not be able to write a scroll of scare monster until it was formally identified through an identify scroll. Uh, same thing with scroll called remove curse, scroll called light. All these things that are called are not formally identified and could not be written using a magic marker. But on this list is um, a scroll of genocide, called genocide, but it says scroll of genocide. So that was formally identified. So we can write that with our magic marker. So before we do nurse dancing, we're going to get rid of liches, just get rid of that danger. So um, we're going to apply with A our magic marker C. A question mark here. We're going to write on this blessed unlabeled scroll. Unlabeled scrolls are scrolls of paper, blank scrolls of paper. So we can write on that. I'm going to write a scroll of genocide. It's going to require quite a few charges um, on the order of 20. We'll take, see how many, but it, it's a variable. It is a range. So let's see how many it uses up. We had 83 before. Uh, so that's real, right, say, blessed scroll of genocide. And now our magic marker is down to 56. So it used um, 28 charges or so. So quite a few charges there. Um, in fact, we can look up exactly what the, the range is for that. Go to magic marker on the wiki. You'll see the uh, ink and charges section here. So genocide scrolls down here requires between 15 and 29. Um, I guess it was 20, 28. It was almost max there. So we got a little bit unlucky with the number of charges that it required. So some sort of random amount of charges between those two numbers. And, uh, but we have a blessed scroll of genocide here ready to use. Now, one important thing to, and I think I may have mentioned this before, but whenever you read a scroll of genocide, just make sure you're not confused. If you read a curse scroll of genocide, then you will genocide your own role. So in this case, we'd genocide Valkyries, which would be an insta, insta death. So we're, I'm going to read this blessed scroll of genocide. Because it's blessed, it's going to say, what class of monsters do you wish to genocide? So this means that you can, instead of specifying a specific monster like a lich, you can specify a whole letter. So you could, in this case, we're going to do a capital L, which is going to genocide all monsters which fall under that category of capital L, which would be Liches, demi liches, master liches, and arch liches. Winkler182, welcome. Does ink on magic marker mean anything besides charges used? Um, it just means the number of charges that are used. Uh, yeah, so a magic marker spawns with, I think, somewhere between 50 and 100 charges. Actually, maybe it's even, even more of a more of a range. Um, but you can get up, up to close to 100 charges on a magic marker, and you can recharge a magic marker exactly once with a scroll of charging. And when you recharge it, it's going to go up to 50 charges. So uh, if you start, we started with a magic marker with 83, we can use that until it gets almost to zero or to zero, and then we can recharge it once with a scroll of charging and get another 50. So that's a total of 83 plus 50, or about 130 charges total. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different scrolls you can write with your magic marker. Really good candidates are our scrolls of charging, enchant armor, enchant weapon, um, potentially remove curse if you need it, genocide. These are all very strong effects. And so having mag magic markers is very, very important. So we're going to go ahead and genocide class L. And it's going to say, uh, wiped out all liches, wiped out all demi liches, wiped out all master liches, wiped out all arch liches. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in my notes here. I'm going to say, um, genocided L. Some people will, will uh, name their primary weapon based on what they've 
they've genocided or, or some other piece of equipment, their towel. But I'm going to put notes right here and, and keep track of that. So now that we've genocided liches, we've made it a lot safer to stay in this room and do nurse dancing. So let me take out our cursed scroll of genocide now. It's just down here. It's one of the ones we wished for. So scroll of genocide named cursed is S. Take that out. And um, I can go ahead and move over here to this permanent Elberith. That's going to keep us a little bit safer. And one of the reasons why I like to, to do nurse dancing in this room. So what you need to do to do nurse dancing is first you need to take off all your armor and take off and, and unwield your weapon as well. So capital T to take off. And we're just going to take off each piece of um, armor here. And it'll stop asking you once you only have uh, one layer that you can take off. So now we've taken off everything. Nothing here says worn. We also want to unwield our primary weapon here. So to do that, we're going to do W for wield, and then we're going to hit the, the dash here. And that's wielding your empty hands. And it will say, you are empty handed. Now we're ready to do some nurse dancing. So to do nurse dancing, we're going to read a cursed scroll of genocide. Make sure it's cursed here. So read O. What monster do you want to genocide? So if it's cursed, it does the opposite. We actually did this last time by reverse genociding um, gray dragons to get our gray dragon scale mail. But now we're going to do nurses, or just nurses fine here. And it's going to say, sent in some nurses. We got four, I think you get between four and six. So this is on the low side. And now we're just going to go ahead and, and hit the S key. And they're going to start hitting us. And you'll see here it says, I hope you don't mind. And you'll notice that instead of doing damage, it actually increased our maximum HP from 104 to 105. So we can just continue to wait here. And we'll just continue hitting S here. And uh, you'll see that. Slowly, our max HP is going to go up. It's up to 106 now. And uh, you're pretty safe in here. The only things you have to worry about are giants coming and breaking this door down. So we already had one nurse disappear. A little bit unlucky. That's kind of quick. Every time a nurse um, grants you max HP, there's a chance that they will uh, run away. So they'll actually try and run away from you. And there's also a chance that they will disappear permanently. Welcome, Andrew. So this is, uh, the castle level is great for doing nurse dancing for two reasons, uh, at least two reasons. Uh, one is you have this room, convenient room, which you can lock the door. It has Elberth in it. And secondly, it's a no teleport level. So normally on other levels, which are not no teleport level levels, the nurse will actually teleport away and then you'll have to chase them down and find them again which when you're not wearing any armor could be dangerous. So in this case, they may run away, but they will never teleport away until they actually just disappear altogether. So I'm going to hit S a, a bunch here um, and just sort of wait here. And we'll, I'm just going to hit S a bunch up to 109 HP. Um, I don't, think you can do N99S here. Yeah, it's because it's going to stop right away. Just even though the nurses aren't doing any damage to you, it's still going to stop. So we sort of need to hammer. I'm actually going to turn off a keycaster just for a minute here. Um, just, to, just to get that off the screen until we're done with this. There's going to be a lot of key keyboard spam here. Just keep your eye at eye out for anything that, you know, can teleport in or break down the door. We should be pretty safe on this Elberth Square. Uh, Andrew says, I got eaten by a purple worm on dungeon level two. How does was it a chameleon? I, I didn't even think chameleons showed up before dungeon level five or so. That seems very, very early to get eaten by a purple worm. Was it a bones? It could be a bones file either. Bones files are also later. Yeah, so it's going to take a little bit of time, unfortunately, and I'm just sort of, uh, there's a way to 
to turn off this more. There probably is a way. There was a shrieker. Oh, yes, of course. That's right. So, um, I think it's a reference to the Dune book. Um, the Shriekers can summon purple worms. Or maybe this is something from, from uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons itself. I don't remember. But if you leave Shriekers, if you let Shriekers continue to um, to shriek, they they might summon a a dull purple worm, which makes them dangerous. Pretty sure it's Dune, yeah. I stripped 129 HP already, so we've we've gained over 20 HP. And there is two nurses left, so that's pretty good. You'll you'll see, you know, there there was a message. A mysterious force prevents the nurse from teleporting. So that's because it's a no teleport level. I'm down to one nurse now. Oh no, we got two still. Yeah, so this can be, uh, you know, it's a little bit tedious, but not not the worst. Um, I even will do this if I'm trying to go fast and do a speed run. I'm not pressing and holding down the S key here. I'm I'm, pre I'm actually pressing and just keeping my eye open for uh, anything that might break down the door or teleport in. Pushing and holding the S key is a, is a good way to get yourself killed. Up to 139, so we've gotten over 30 points of HP here. And every hit point really, really helps, um, even to the very end of the game. So, going from about 100 HP to about 150 is, is a huge benefit. Uh, someone from Discord suggested I try the protection racket, as I hadn't done that yet, so I did. Yeah, so the protection racket is a strategy, or maybe sort of like a meta strategy, where you take a character like an archaeologist or a healer, commonly. Someone who either starts with a lot of gold or can get a lot of gold easily, like a tourist would be another candidate. And you try and get to the to Gnome Town while you're still a low level and with a lot of money. And so we talked about buying protection. We actually weren't able to buy... Actually, we were able to buy protection, I think. Yes, we got four points of it. Um, we got Orc Town, not, not uh, Mine Town. So we weren't able to buy protection at Mine Town, but we were able to buy it a little bit later in the dungeon when we found an aligned priest. But the ideally, you go, you go down into the mines and you get to mine town at XP level one, and then you're able to buy each point of protection for 400 gold each. So if you, you can you know, fairly easily max out or close to max out your uh, protection, get your armor class down really low throughout strategy. But it's, it's, it's kind of like high, high risk, high reward, because you're... Your hit points are gonna be fairly fairly low. You're you're not gaining XP levels. You're probably relying on a pet to do all the kills for you. All right, so we're weak here, so let's go ahead and eat something. Uh, we don't need our lizard corpse, so we're gonna apply our bag. We'll take out comestible, and I'm going to eat this. Uh, I'll eat this this food ration here. So eat Y. And so we're we're no longer weak. We'll continue waiting. Now we got pretty lucky here for hit points. Actually, I don't usually expect to get sixty HP from this 
uh, particularly from four nurses. I think, I think I would consider 50 HP to be pretty good nurse dancing. So I'm um, getting over 60 here is, is really quite good. Yeah, so just another minute here. And sorry for the for the tedious nature of this, but I do suggest doing this, particularly if this is your first ascension. I think it's it's quite quite worthwhile and it's gonna improve your chances of ascending later in the game. Yeah, so we're uh just waiting for that last nurse to disappear. Sometimes nurses just you get lucky and they just stick around for a long time. Let's see right now she's running away. Trying to teleport away. And there, I think. Oh no, they're still there. I keep thinking that the last nurse has disappeared because we're invisible. So we have we have permanent innate invisibility and we had to take off our mummy wrapping to do this. So now we're we're just this uh highlighted square right here and the nurse is that sign but i keep looking down thinking that there's only one at sign that means that we're that the nurse has disappeared but there's still one nurse left at least now um, we're not getting those more oh, we are still getting this more we're getting fewer of those more messages because there's only one nurse who's uh, attacking us at a time I suppose I could um, edit this part out, but I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to remember to do that. So this will probably end up in the YouTube video. Oh, there they go. So I think we started with about 104 HP. So we got 80 HP, max HP out of that, which is really, really good. Uh, I'd say that's higher than expected. Um, but now we can go ahead and put our armor back on. Don't forget to do that. Put our... Great Dark and Scale Mail back on. We'll put our uh, Shield Reflection back on. The Mummy Wrapping. High Boots. Leather Gloves. And our Helm. And so we're back down to negative 14 AC. Let's also wield our Excalibur. So, um, there is a throne here. Uh, there are two storerooms that we want to take advantage of. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, before we continue on to the quest. So um, let me turn Keycaster key back on here. Um, and we'll continue on. There we go. Door is locked, so let's apply our key. Unlock it, and then we'll move this way. Uh, so this is a uh, just a quivering blob. I think we can eat it. I don't think it provides any intrinsics that we don't already have. There's the troll. Also potentially trying to kill and eat this troll. Um, all right, and we have a warg here. So one thing about doing the nurse dancing that you have to keep in mind is because you are kind of hold off, uh, you know, waiting on this level for a long time, let's put our towel on, P, capital P, T. So there could be a lot of things that, that spawn in. Actually, this is really interesting because we have like five gray dragons, looks like. Um, that's really, 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 really unusual. And we did. So I'm wondering, we reverse genocided them. So probably what happened, because we reverse genocided them in this room here, I think some of them um, appeared inside the room and some of them appeared outside of the room. So these are probably leftover from um, those two reverse genocides that we did because they don't spawn in packs. It would be very unusual for these to spawn naturally. But yeah, there's um, five gray dragons out here. Uh, but yeah, there could be a lot of things that spawn while you're sort of you know sitting there and waiting. It looks like actually not a whole lot is around, so I think we're ready to... to Okay, so we have uh, something something explodes. You're caught in a blast of kaleidoscopic light. You're freaked out. So that was a invisible black light. 
apply our unicorn horn here, and that will cure the hallucination. Um, so we can kill this cobalt shaman. I don't know what order we want to do this in. We could sit on the chest first, or sorry, sit on the throne first, rather. Um, might as well. So we might lose some, uh, get some attribute damage here. In 3.6, which is what we're playing, you can cure attribute damage with your unicorn horn. So if we granted an insight, uh, we can identify something. So what do we want to identify first? Uh, let's check out this ring called Bronze 300. Uh, base price 300 rings can be really good. A ring of teleporter control, that's pretty nice. So that allows us to um, read scrolls of teleportation or zap ourselves with teleportation and decide where on the level we want to go. It also works with level porting. So with a cursed scroll of teleport, you can teleport to different levels that um, control in a controlled way, which is very powerful. Let's sit on this throne, throne again. That's an, a n nothing. And then uh, the throne vanishes in a puff of, of logic. So I think we already looted this, but let's go ahead and loot it. Check it out. We'll apply our key in below us. And see if there's a scroll of identify. We'll take that. I'll take the yellow potion too. And I'm going to put our scrolls and potions away here just so we don't lose them to a magic trap or a fire trap. So it's guaranteed to be a secret door right here behind the throne and chest. So we're going to hit S a couple of times and we're going to open it up. So it's locked to so apply our key. And then there's going to be um, trap doors in this hallway. So here's the first one. Um, and these trap doors lead down to the Valley of the Dead. We don't want to go down to the Valley of the Dead yet, so we want to levitate over these trap doors. I'm going to put on our. Where is it? I think I might put it in our bag. Yeah, there's our ring of levitation. So put that on. And we're going to float over the trap door. There's going to be another one here. Um, trap door opens under you. You don't fall in because you're levitating. And now we're going to look for, well, there's the mimic. We actually saw the mimic. And then here are two doors, one on the top, one on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you go first. It will go to the bottom first, unlock it. And uh, there's going to be two dragons here. I think I seem to recall there were black dragons and maybe orange dragons. I forget exactly. So to be really safe, just um, you want to fight them from this space so you're not dealing with both their breath weapons. Although at this point in the game, as long as you have reflection, you should be perfectly safe against their breath weapons. So there comes the black dragon. Black dragons have a disintegration breath weapon. Very, very dangerous if you don't have reflection. Uh, but we do, so still they can do quite a bit of damage uh, with melee dragons. Even with your our negative 14 AC here, you can do quite a bit of damage, so just watch your HP total. Looks like we lost about 20 points here. Yes, we lost about 30 points of, of HP. So at this point, there's no more trap doors. So let's go ahead and remove the Ring of Levitation with capital R. Take a look here. There is a Black Dragon Corpse, a Yellow Dragon Corpse, a Scroll of Create Monster, Wanted Digging. I think we'll take the Scroll and the Wanted Digging. And we could eat the Black Dragon Corpse. Uh, we aren't currently satiated. So um, eating Black Dragon Corpses will give you resistance from disintegration, which is not terribly useful, to be honest. Um, we sort of want shock resistance. That's probably the next highest priority here. Um, but disintegration resistance is something you can get only from eating black dragon corpses. So let's go ahead and do it. I don't think we've eaten in a little while, so 
Um, I might have eaten the wrong corpse here. Yeah, I, I ate a yellow dragon corpse instead of the black dragon corpse. Um, so we're satiated. We can't eat the black dragon corpse now that we're, we're satiated. In fact, we're over satiated. You can tell that because it says um, you're having a hard time getting it, all of it down. So if we try to eat something else right now, we have a chance of choking to death. So certainly we don't want to do that. Let's go in here, go down here, and we'll um, open these. And uh, so there's going to be, this is the armor store room, which is probably the most interesting of them. Because uh, there's possible, you can find good cloaks. Uh, there's a boot of, uh, boots of levitation. I don't think we need, need another pair of them. I think we have, um, yeah, we have a, oh, those are boots, elven boots, huh? Yeah, the boots of levitation are in our inventory. Actually, the ones that we are in, are in our inventory are probably cursed. Although I think we did read a blessed scroll of remove curse. So I think these are actually uncursed now. So we'll keep the ones which we know are uncursed and we'll leave those in the ground. Um, so there are a couple sets of crystal plate mail here. Crystal plate mail is interesting in that it doesn't impede spellcasting. Um, so metal armor will make spellcasting more difficult. Uh, we're playing a Valkyrie and we're not playing with spellcasting this game, so that doesn't really matter. Crystal armor is also rust proof. It's also very, very heavy. Uh, provides an AC of three, which is pretty good. All right, there's a couple of hill orcs in here. Looks like they this is probably the comestibles room. Um, so sort of like a storeroom of food. And they picked up a bunch of food. I don't think we care about any of this food. So let's leave that on the ground. Um, looks like we have, we have auto pickup turned off as well. So we can turn that back on just to uh, pick up this gold and stuff. It's not terribly important, but we'll get the scroll of crate monsters, the wand of digging. We'll go across and we'll open up this other door here. Looks like we have some, these are either soldiers or gray elves. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, soldiers. We've got some more soldiers coming in. They might have wands, which will zap at us. Uh, the orange dragon is a great way to get sleep resistance if we didn't already have it. I think we got it from an elf or something, but um, if you don't have sleep resistance at this point in the game, it's very important to get. So eating an orange dragon corpse when you're not satiated is a great way to, to get that resistance. In fact, dragons um, are a great way to get any of the intrinsics which you're missing at this point in the game. So um, if you need fire resistance, you can eat a red dragon. If you need cold resistance, you can eat a white dragon. If you need shock resistance, you can eat a blue dragon. And it gives you uh, res those resistances 100% of the time. You push some extra healings, quite nice. So there's going to be two more storerooms here, which are less exciting. So this one is just gems. Um, we could identify gems with our touchstone, but I don't think it's too necessary right now. And here we have a weapon storeroom, which probably isn't going to have anything. Sometimes uh, artifact weapons will generate here, but it looks like these are all standard weapon so we're gonna go ahead and put our ring of levitation back on and we're gonna head back down to the quest now as those um soldiers i don't know where they ended up They're probably around here somewhere on my towel um oh, they all fell down the, the they all fell down this trap door so we'll find them downstairs in uh, the Valley of the Dead later. Hey, welcome, uh, Jonas Smalls, 88. Is there a way to dilute potions or blank scrolls in pools of water rather than fountains? Yes. Um, it's a really good question. So there are two ways to do it with pools of water, and that includes the moats. So the first way is you um, 
take anything which might be damaged by the water. So that would primarily be potions and scrolls that you don't want to be diluted, but also anything which might be um, not rust proof. You're going to put that into a bag or a sack. You're going to drop it. And then you can just throw yourself into the water repeatedly. Uh, so you can hold in your hand anything that you want to dilute. And then you can actually just jump into the water. It's perfectly safe as long as you're not falling into water that doesn't have dry land uh, next to it. You're always going to crawl out. Uh, okay, we can actually do that right now. I'll, I'll show that off. And the second way you can do it, um, which is really convenient, is if you have um, boots of water walking. They let you walk on top of the, the water. You can actually just walk on top of the water and then dip into the water. Um, I should do it over here, I guess. So we actually have. Uh, the only thing we have here that will rust is our Orcish Helm. So let's take that off. Take off the Orcish Helm. And I'm going to apply my bag. I'm going to put into it anything which might rust or just things in general that we want to, uh, to get rid of here. So we can put the Orcish Helm in there. So we can put away this, this amulet. Uh, the Scroll of Create Monster, we up, we, I think we actually do want to turn that into blank paper. Extra healing we, we want to keep. I'll put the, the rings away, even though they're, they're not going to get damaged by the water, but just, um, just kind of clean up our inventory here. The wands won't get damaged either, um, so those can stay. I guess we put, put away these extra wands um, of digging. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> looking here. The lamps are safe. The magic markers are safe. The pickaxe will rust, so let's put that away. The towel will get wet. It doesn't really matter. It actually makes it a more effective weapon. So putting everything away into our bag of holding here, which we don't want to get damaged or um, diluted. And then we'll take out scrolls and potions we do want to get diluted. So let's see. A scroll of light is a good candidate. And scrolls of create monster are good to dilute. Uh, scroll of fire is good to dilute. Food detection. And um, we actually have quite a bit of holy water. But potions of healing, I, I usually consider those really good candidates for, for dilution. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll hold off on the rest of these. I'll put all these into my open inventory, and then I'm going to drop my bag of holding. Um, we are levitating, actually, so I, I should have watched watch that. I'm going to remove a ring of levitation here. Um, one thing you can do if, you, if you're dropping stuff and you're levitating is you can break potions and things. So we're going to drop the bag of holding and just you know double check here. Everything in our inventory is uh, is fine. It's not going to get rusted or this, these scrolls and potions we want to get diluted. And we're just going to throw ourselves into the water now. You fall into the water, you sink like a rock. Your scroll of fire fades, your towel gets damp. Your scroll of create monster fades, etc. Your potion of healing dilutes. And all that happens. And then you crawl out of water. And it says, phew, that was close. Um, it's actually perfectly safe. And um, we can throw ourselves in one more time to, um, to get these diluted potions of healing turned into water. Just go in one more time and uh, diluted potions of healing, dilute further, and that's it. So now we have uh, unlabeled scrolls and uh, two potions of water. So that's, that's a way to do it. It's not too bad to do it that way. Um, you know, it just it takes a little bit of inventory management. We're going to put all these back into the back of holding. And let me take out our helm here and we'll wear it again. So uh, that is one way to do it. Water walking boots is another way to do it. You don't have to take off anything. You just walk on top of the water and then dip your, dip your stuff into the water infinitely. And then the third way is just by using a wand of cancellation. So we have a wand of cancellation. I don't know if I did this before. Let's go ahead and take out, let's see, 
anything else we could potentially get rid of. Let's get rid of one scroll of earth. Um, let's get rid of um, let's get rid of these six scrolls of teleportation. And I don't know. Let's get rid of this pink potion. And uh, yeah, you can just drop scrolls and potions on the ground like this. And we'll take a look down here. So now that we have a pink potion, some scrolls of teleportation, and scroll of earth. Just step off of it. And then we can zap our wand of cancellation in that direction. And uh, so this is interesting. The pink potion did not change. That actually gives us a, a pretty good idea what it could be. Um, so if we go to cancellation, um, So most potions are converted to uncursed water. Potions of sea invisible and sickness become fruit juice. So they would have, they would have changed. And then potions of booze, fruit juice, and oil are unchanged except for their BC status. So we know that the pink potion is either booze, fruit juice, or oil. You can actually check if it's oil too, just by applying it. So if you apply a potion of oil, then you light it, uh, and it starts to Put off a dim light. So we know that this, that this one is either booze or fruit juice. We can call it. So capital C O. We can call the pink potion pink booze or fruit juice. Uh, Zen Burning says, I was having my best run ever recently, made it all the way to Orcus, but died to him. Not from the wand of death, but something paralyzed me and I got beat up on the way through my amulet of life until death. Yeah. So Orcus's level, and we'll get there eventually, has a bunch of shades. Um, so that's probably the biggest danger. Shades will paralyze you. And then um, Orcus will also summon nasties. So what you end up having, what, up, what ends up happening is you get surrounded by a bunch of monsters. Orcus hits pretty hard himself and then you get uh, paralyzed by a shade and and killed uh, Jonas Small says this is a lifesaver I'm just about to get the book of the dead from Rodney but have run out of water sources for holy water this might help me get my first ascension good luck that'd be great yeah let, let us know how it goes um, all right so that those are just ways to get uh, uncursed Unlabeled scrolls or unlabeled scrolls and uh, and potions of water. One thing to point out is that dipping scrolls will maintain their BUC status. So you can dip blessed scrolls, which will give you uh, blessed scrolls of paper, uh, or cursed scrolls, which will give you cursed scrolls of paper. But potions are always made uncursed, so that you're basically just replacing them with uncursed water. So we're going to go back up. Um, and we need to get up to XP level 14 to do the quest. So you may have remembered from the previous, um, the previous time, when we went to the quest, we were sent back to the surface by our quest leader uh, because we were not high enough level. So you have to get to XP level 14 before you can attempt the quest. And it takes quite a bit. Uh, if you were wanted to sort of explore every level, you might be able to get to XP level 14, but it's it really increases at a greater and greater rate, exponential rate. Um, so getting from 10 to 12 is a lot easier. Getting from 12 to 13 is a lot easier than getting from 13 to 14. So we're going to abuse um, Curse Scrolls of Genocide here to get from XP level 12 to XP level 14. And to do that, we're going to take out another cursed unlabeled scroll. So we have three of them. We'll take out one of them. And we're going to use our magic marker, which here is C. It's got 56 charges left. So apply C. We're going to write on the cursed unlabeled scroll. And we're going to write another genocide. 
and we're down to 40 so that took 16 charges to uh to write so that, that was a, quite a bit cheaper than the last one we wrote and we're going to reverse genocide wraiths so wraiths if you eat a wraith corpse it will grant you uh, it'll, it will give you a level level up um, you do not want to do this on the castle level or other levels which are considered graveyard levels and it's a little bit it's not obvious which levels are graveyard levels but it is in the wiki uh, the castle i'll tell you right now is uh, a graveyard level considered a graveyard level and um it says right here it is considered a graveyard level they should put that here actually in the table and so in graveyard levels which include any level where there is a graveyard undead are unlikely to leave corpses which includes wraiths so we can actually double check that this level isn't a graveyard level by putting our towel on um we don't see it there isn't like a bunch of undead wraiths or things around here so um let's go somewhere here where we can uh do this i think right here is fine you want to make sure you're wielding excalibur because wraiths will uh, have a drain life attack but excalibur will prevent that so right here is fine we're going to read the curse scroll of genocide and we're going to genocide wraiths so that sends in five of them which is good and we can start attacking them they aren't particularly dangerous i mean they're doing some damage here but uh so let's jump over here Anytime a wraith drops a corpse, just jump right over on top of it and eat it so it doesn't disappear. So the wraith corpse tastes okay. You feel more experienced, and we're up to XP level 13. Um, I don't want to attack the one that's on top of the stairs here because they'll run away. So I'm going to attack the one up here uh, to the north. We destroyed it, but it didn't drop a corpse. So now let's do the one to the northwest. And that one did drop a corpse. So let's jump on it eat it and we got to xp level 14 so that was successful actually draw these away from the stairs a little bit and we'll try and kill them and get them to not uh run away that one had a potion of water that's pretty lucky actually to get three in a row um so we're up to xp level 15 we've got one more to to kill here did not drop a corpse but we succeeded in the the that goal actually we can mark i think that's on our list here yeah get to xp level 14. so that's been done and now we just need to go on the quest um so let's continue on all right so here we're at medusa we did kill medusa before um which is why i didn't have that annotated but this would be like you didn't have reflection. This is going up onto Medusa level and being surprised by it is a way to, to get yourself killed. Uh, but we previously killed Medusa. We got the shield of reflection from Perseus. So what we do need to cross over. Um, and this is a this is a pretty dangerous level. So again, I think we talked about this before. Uh, the most dangerous thing here are these electric eels. So they're the kind of um, bright blue semicolons uh, so e giant eels will and electric eels will wrap around you and drown you and in addition electric eels when they wrap around you may shock you uh, and destroy your rings and wands so if you're wearing a ring of levitation and an electric eel shocks you and it gets destroyed and you're in the middle of water there's no land nearby you're going to fall in and drown so um in addition, we have a winged gargoyle here. We have a jabberwock here. We have a zerudi. These are all very strong melee creatures. Um, jabberwock should probably be on this list, similar to minotaurs. Probably not as dangerous as minotaurs because they do respect uh, Elbereth, but they do a similar amount of damage. So I'll put them here. Jabberwock, high damage. And they actually have a 50. MR, I believe. We'll double check that, but um, it's an orange J. 
I think we looked this up last time. Yeah, they have a base MR of 50. So that makes them a little bit more dangerous than other sort of high damage things like the winged gargoyle, uh, minotaurs, the, the Zorn, the Zurdi. Those all have a low, low or no MR. So what we, our plan here is to abuse our bugle, which is a scare tool, and uh, scare off the eels and the other things so that we don't have to fight them. Um, without, let's remove our towel here. Without a scare tool, I would be a lot more worried about this level. Um, you'll find here there will be a bunch of stone golems right outside. Um, so that's what these, um, these uh, quotation marks are. Those are stone golems. So um, stone golems are probably not going to be a huge deal here. Um, when you when you kill them, they just turn into statues of stone golems. There's a bunch of them here, and uh, we just can kill them. They're they do hit pretty hard, but uh, they're not as big a deal as uh, other things. Iron ring. Actually, put our lamp on here. Uh, kind of a bear trap. And uh, all right, here's the wing gargoyle. I think we can kill it here. Uh, it's done maybe on the order of 15 points of damage to us here. So we've got to keep watch that. Uh, did another, I don't know, another 15 or so. Um, and we were able to kill it. So maybe a total of about uh, 50 points. So definitely, definitely a dangerous melee creature. They also have a very, very good AC and they fly. Let's put away these scrolls and potions. And, uh, continue on down this way. All right. Um, you feel that monsters are aware of your presence. So, um, what is, is this, um, the Titan is now hostile when it wasn't before. Pretty sure it was peaceful before. I'm not actually sure why the Titan became hostile. I don't know if, if someone, uh, has an answer for that, but so now we have a hostile Titan and it just cast the, uh, detect monsters spell. So that's why you get that you feel that monsters are aware of your presence. Um, I feel like we somehow are aggravating monsters, but in any case, um, now we have a hostile Titan to deal with. We do have magic resistance, so this is less dangerous than it was before. But Titans can uh, summon nasties; they'll summon creatures around you, which are pretty strong. So you have to be a little bit careful here. And I think they've they've have uh, high magic resistance as well, so we can't scare them off. Yeah, seventy. So that's going to make this a little bit more dangerous. I think there's a secret door back here. Um, yeah, it's right there. And let's go ahead. Let me put my towel on for a second here. I just want to kind of keep an eye on. The Titan, but also these electric eels. They're sort of down and on this side of the building. So I think I go, I levitate and I go out and up and this way. And uh, I might be able to actually just a bit avoid the electric eels altogether. Let's take a look at this green A. Is it coatl? It is peaceful though. So quaddles are interesting in that they also can drown you. Um, they're, can you spell that? They actually fly, C-O-U-A-T-L. So 
they aren't a sea monster per se, but they do have a drowning attack. They can fly. And they will uh, wrap around, wrap themselves around you. And if they're over water, they can actually drown you. So that makes them um, pretty dangerous, um, akin to other other uh, sea monsters that have drowning attacks. And um, magic resistance of thirty as well. So one thing about the drowning attacks is usually if an eel or um, something else wraps around you, they have zero magic resistance. You can use your scare tool to uh, to scare them off and save your life. But with a quaddle, because they have a magic resistance, that would that would not work. This one is peaceful though, because they are a lawful angelic being. Welcome, American Elm. Good to see you. So we can go ahead and put our um, put our ring of levitation on. I'm gonna leave my towel on here just because I want to keep my eye on these eels. We are levitating though, so we can scroll, go up and around this way. The eels are coming directly up towards us here, so I think we're going to have to scare them off now. Which I'm kind of surprised. Oh yeah, I guess this is this this building does go a little bit further up. Um. So when we get a little bit closer here, start using our bugle. So I'm going to apply H, revise yes, and uh, and they should start to run off now. And they should move away. There they go. We're just going to try, we're just going to make sure that they stay away from us. And when they start moving towards us again, we will apply our bugle again couple times and uh, just scare them off. Just don't want to get close to them. Um, these dark blue semicolons I think are just uh, jellyfish. Yeah. So jellyfish are not dangerous. They don't have a drowning attack. So we're not too concerned about them. So the Jabberwock's going to leave us alone. The Zerudi is a non-flying creature, so it's going to be stuck where it is. So I think we're totally fine here. And we're just going to move all the way back to the stairs. Here's a chick trace here, which is interesting. Now that we're not over water, we can remove our towel, and we can remove the levitation. Uh, I guess we can kill the chick trace here. That doesn't did not drop a corpse. And up we go. All right, on to the quest. So I'm going to go ahead and do some fast traveling here. So underscore less than period. Here's a cockatrice. I think we do want to take the cockatrice corpse with us if, if uh, yeah, and to drop one. So you just double check before you pick it up that you're wearing your leather gloves. We are. We'll go ahead and pick that up and perfectly safe in your inventory as long as you're not wielding it. So I'll just leave it there. And it might be helpful in the early part of the quest if it doesn't dis if it doesn't rot for them. Okay, up we go. Again, arrow trap here. Put this gold away. I'm gonna do overview here. So again, that's the pound sign. And overview. So level 12 is where the big room is and the portal to the quest is. There's a temple on level 13. Um, yeah, so we might want to stop by there as well. Oh, and we left a wraith on level 20 as well. So that would be another would would have been another way to get um get a level. I think we left them alive on pur on purpose. Uh, Leprechaun Hall. I think we decided to just leave this one be. Although there is a temple on the way, so let's go ahead and kill them, the leprechauns. Because we can spend our gold. So 
So every time I kill Leprechaun, I'm just putting the gold away. A, B, I, B. So that the Leprechauns won't teleport away when they hit me. All right, and then we'll continue on. Oh, I still have my lamp on, fortunately. Uh, I forgot to turn it off, so. It's almost out of oil. There's this Rudy, and I think we can kill this without too much trouble here. They're considered a fairly strong melee creature, but we're pretty strong now. I'm going to go ahead and just check my enhance menu here. Yeah, we're expert at longsword, so we've increased that all the way. And let's go ahead and fast travel to, I think it was level 13. I yeah, so there's a wraith here. Um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and kill the, the wraith. I didn't drop a corpse anyway. I'm actually going to see if there is a... Oh. Yeah, there's a passage here. Just thinking there might be a, a shorter path to the upstairs. Cockatrice corpse rots away, so we weren't able to use that for anything. This is the rogue level again. And interesting enough, we could make a shortcut here. So we can zap our wand of digging this way. Um, and just make ourselves a shortcut from one staircase to the other. You don't have to do that. Um, it's not necessary, but it could make your life a little bit easier later on. All right, here we are, uh, a vault and an incubus. Um, and there's a temple here as well. Let's go to the temple. There's that incubus. I don't think we need to take advantage of the incubus anymore. All right, there's the uh, aligned priest. So one thing about going up levels, it makes the priest a lot more expensive. So we need 15 times 400, 6,000 gold for each point of protection. Let's see how much we've picked up here. So we have 15,000, so we can get two points of protection here. We'll take out 6,000 gold and let's go ahead and chat with the priest. We'll offer 6,000 and that gets us to AC negative 15. One more time, another 6,000. And that gets us up to minus 16. So we're keeping track of that here. And we have up to six points of protection. You can get up to nine points of protection easily. Uh, Zen, Burning, Zen Burning asks, how does your fast travel work so well? I press five and then a direction. My guy hardly ever moves far at all, stops at everything. Yeah, so what I'm doing for um, to get to the downstairs is not the five, it's actually the underscore. Uh, as Andrew mentioned. So and if you do underscore, it's gonna ask you where you want to travel to. You can just move your cursor around like this, but you can also hit different symbols. So in this case, I'm hitting the, the greater than symbol. And it goes straight to the staircase up, and then I hit the period, and it's going to uh to go towards the the upstairs. It will stop you 
if you see monsters or uh, or other things. Um, so we are going to. All right, let's go ahead and and uh, see if we can't get some positive benefit from the incubus here. I uh, feel restored to health. So that is a positive uh, positive outcome there. I'd say incubuses and succubuses are dangerous though, because you generally take off your source of reflection and, and magic resistance. And if you do that and you're attacked by something, uh, that could be an issue. All right, so there are two kind of purplish carrots here. I think the bright one is the portal. Yeah, and the dark, darker one is just a teleportation trap. So we do a fast travel over here. And we're going to go ahead and go into the quest. So we already got fire resistance. Um, put our towel on for a second here. Looks like there aren't any more ants or fire giants here. There's just the uh, quest leader and um, some other peaceful friends. I'm going to put on our ring of levitation. Oh. I do that all the time. So if you put put on your ring of levitation while you're on top of the portal, you're actually going to go through it. Same if you take off the ring of levitation. But I do recommend levitating here just because, well, you're, you're going to see it right here. A tower of flame erupts from, from the ice under the warrior. The ice crackles and melts. The warrior drowns. So that's, um, that's what can happen to you. It won't drown you because you'll, you'll be able to climb out, but it will get into your bag and uh, dilute and blank scrolls and potions. So Andrew says that they were hit by a black dragon's breath ray, um, a disintegration ray, while they were um, consorting with an incubus or a succubus, which can be an instant, instant death. Yeah, so levitate while you're in these in in these ice levels. It's probably for the best. So we're gonna go and talk to our quest nemesis, or not nemesis, our quest leader. So again, uh, let me read the future for you now. Overexplain. Perhaps you managed to change it enough. <clears throat> it is not clear. Overexplained. For my sight is limited without our relic. But it is now likely that you can defeat Lord Searcher and recover the Orb of Fate. So this is because you're level 14 or above. A short time ago, Lord Searcher and his minions attacked this place. They opened the huge volcanic vents you see about the hill and attacked. I knew that this was to come to pass and had asked Tyr for a group of warriors to help defend this place. The few you see here are the mightiest of Valhalla's own and are all that are left of 100 tier sent. Despite the great and glorious battle we fought, Lord Searcher managed at last to steal the Orb of Fate. This has upset the balance of the universe. And unless it is returned into my care, Lord Searcher, may you start Ragnarok. You must find the entrance to the cave of, of, search, of Searcher. Travel downward from there, and you will find Lord Searcher's lair. Defeat him and return the Orb of Fate to me. Andrios, Andrio says, let me over-explain your future for you. So now that we're allowed to go on the quest here, we can go ahead and check out this chest. Um, we'll take the Smoky Potion. I guess we'll take the Wand of Lightning too. And put away these scrolls and potions. And we just have some regular giant ants here. So we'll kill them. Put on our ring of levitation and we'll continue to the downstairs. So I think I already talked about lava before, but you'll see that there are um, the dark blue and then there are the red right curly braces. So you have water. 
we have molten lava. Molten lava is an instant death if you fall into it and you don't have fire resistance. Uh, it can also just be um, like a slow death for you if, if you can't escape it. If you do fall in it, you can escape by teleporting yourself away, potentially if, if the level you're on allows teleportation, or by zapping in a wand to cool down. But generally, you, you just don't want to fall into lava. It's, it's, it will destroy your boots. Um, it's basically, just don't fall into lava is the best, best policy here, and levitation helps with that. Remove our ring of levitation because we can't go down the stairs without with it on, and we're going to descend. And we have um, just sort of the standard creatures you find here. We have one fire giant and a bunch of fire ants. Uh, I'm going to look at the various uh, things here. We have some wands, we have a scroll, some potions. So I think we are going to take a look at these things because they can be very good. I'm going to put our Bring a levitation on, and we'll, we'll go over to this wand first. I think let's remove it. It's a wand to sleep. That's really good. It actually could come in uh, very handy when fighting Lord Searcher pretty soon, who is a very strong melee nemesis, but um, is susceptible to things like uh, wands of sleep. I'm not worried about, or not really interested in that spellbook. Remember, fire ants will destroy potions and scrolls in your inventory, so just make sure they're put away in your bag before you fight them. Uh, we won't be able to push boulders while we're wearing our levitation. Fire giants tend to, to um, drop a bunch of gems. Maple wand. So we don't know what this maple wand is, so we want to engrave test it right away. So again, we'll just write something, doesn't matter what, on the ground, and then we're going to engrave again, capital E. We're going to engrave with that capital X maple wand. We're going to add to the current engraving. Um, and it was a wand of secret door detection, and, and that was um, identified for us because there was a trap nearby. So wands of secret door detection will detect secret doors and traps which are nearby. Not terribly useful. Um, but there are a couple places where you might want one, so we'll hang on to it. Um, I've just picked up, what was that? Scroll of Identify. And we'll check out these, this potion and that scroll over there as well. Might as well. Yellow potion. And... I think fast travel will work here if we do question mark. No. We can do five and then go to the right. That's nah, not working either. Let's kill those ants and we'll just head on over to the scroll and uh, remove it. A scroll of light, not very useful. You can actually, um, if you do the forward slash here, you can actually do capital O, forward slash, and then capital O, and it will it will tell you, you know, sort of what items are around, uh, which can be useful just to see what what items might be on a map like this. So we're levitating. Let's go down. So we'll uh, underscore. Greater than period. We're going to go down there. We'll remove our, our ring of levitation. I guess we'll kill this giant ant. We'll go downstairs. The ice and snow give way to a valley floor. You see ahead of you a huge round hill surrounded by pools of lava. This then is the entrance to the cave of Searcher. Looks like you are not going, going to get in without a fight though. So this is um, one of the levels that is always the same. Um, so there is a, this is a cave entrance all the way on the other side of, um, of this. There are pools of water with lava on the 
on sort of on the corners here. And uh, the cave is full of giants who are kind of guarding, guarding the cave entrance. I scroll remove curse. That's pretty good. So you can go either down or up. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we are levitating here. So there's the first giant. It's a, it's a fire giant. Uh, silver wand is a bolt of cold. So we found uh, wands of cold are identified now. We'll pick that up. So we'll remove our ring of levitation, pick up the wand of cold. And uh, yeah, giants will often have a bunch of gems here. These are all glass here. You can also eat the giants to get fire resistance if you don't have it already with a 50% chance. And also uh, sometimes you'll get strength up. If you have 18 or higher strength, it probably is not terribly necessary to get more strength. Um, I mean, if you get a lot of strength ups, you will start to get additional benefits. So we can take a look at the chart here. Um, all right, here, here we go. So between 1801 and 1850, you get a plus one to hit and plus three to damage. Uh, if you can get up to 51 to, to 75, you get an additional to hit bonus. You get to 76 to 90, you get an additional damage bonus. And 91 to 99, you get another damage bonus. And 1800, uh, you get plus three, uh, between plus three and plus six. Uh, so an additional two hit and an additional damage. So you have to eat a lot of giant corpses to get from your current strength level of 1806 to 1850. So I would probably just not even try. Uh, if you if you get gauntlets of power, and that will give you a, a net plus two to hit and plus three to damage over what you have. So gauntlets of power, they put your strength to 25, probably worth wearing if you find them. Um, I would not say that's probably worth a wish, but so we're going to go ahead and continue levitating here, putting our ring of, ring of levitation on. We'll go find the entrance to the cave here. This is a pretty big fight. I think once you get to this point of the game, you're not going to have too much trouble with it. But um, there's going to be a lot of giants here, a lot of fire ants. Um, so you definitely you know, just watch your HP total and make sure that uh, you don't get overwhelmed. And you can fight things in this uh, cave entrance as well. You don't have to go in to the, the cave. So there's a, a trap here, and it's it looks like it's right here, actually. And um, one thing in NetHack is traps, which are covered with items, are obscured. And you can unobscure them by using the terrain command. So that's uh, shift three or the pound and terrain. And what we want here is the known map without monsters and objects, but with traps. So we're going to do the B option here. And indeed, you'll see right here is a fire trap um, that's covered with uh, all those corpses. Um, so we can go in there safely. Um, because, again, if we use terrain, um, actually went A here, you'll see that these are floor tiles, they're not ice, so that fire trap is not going to melt the ice and, and dunk us in water. Um, and as long as you have fire resistance, the fire trap won't hurt you. It will destroy things. Oh, the sleep ray, another sleep ray. We do want that sleep ray. Um, actually, we may want to go through here. So just double check, like these scrolls and this potion in our inventory will get destroyed by that fire trap. It might burn our leather gloves, our high boots. Our mummy wrapping, like all these things, are susceptible to um, to getting burned. 
So we could also um, consider removing these. Um, I think the primary use of gloves are that they uh, prevent you from getting destroyed or getting turned to stone by cockatrice corpses, but um, let's go ahead and do it while we're thinking about it. So let me put in our bag all our scrolls and potions and uh, let's kill this fire giant. A potion of paralysis. Um, so this is always going to going to paralyze you for a few turns, which can be dangerous if you're surrounded by creatures. Um, as it was, I think we got hit like three or three times before we started to move again. And a ring of reaction will protect against that. All right, so we're going to be safe here. Um, I'm going to remove levitation and I'm going to remove our leather gloves and remove the mummy wrapping and remove the high boots. Okay, so I think now, uh, and that's actually interesting. So you see there, something has a, a wand of fire. You hear a nearby zap and the bolt of fire hits it. Ice crackles and melts. So someone zapped a wand of fire at us and there were three ice squares here and they're all water now. So that's another thing that can happen if, if something breathes fire at you or, or zaps fire and melt the ice if you're over it and actually dunk you in the water. Um, so we can try and push this boulder. I can hear a monster behind the boulder, perhaps that way I can't move it. So this is where I'm going to apply my bag of holding, take out wands. I'm going to take out a wand of striking. Uh, wands of striking can be very useful in these situations where you want to get past a boulder without having to use your pickaxe. So we're going to zap the wand of striking. Nothing happens, so it's empty. All right, so I'm going to call, capital C, call I. I'm going to call this um, wand of striking, capital Y. I'm going to call empty. We actually have another one in our inventory, so let's use that one. So zap, capital A. And uh, the boulder falls apart, so uh, we actually destroyed a potion. We don't really know what it is. And now we're going to step onto the fire trap here. Got a wand to sleep, a wand to digging, another wand we haven't identified. Uh, tower of flame erupts from the floor, you were uninjured, so we have fire resistance, so that didn't hurt us. So there's a few giants here. There's um, two fire giants, two stone giants, and a fire ant. I think we've thinned out the crowd a bit here. That's the the um, the giant with a wand of fire. We do want that wand of fire. I think it's been used you know, at least four times, so it's probably close to uh, empty. And we can do that trick again. We can uh, use the Call I. We'll call the wand of fire. Actually, we don't know which one that was, do we? One of those wands of fire are um, close to empty. Oh, there's a, a wand here we haven't identified, so let's go ahead and grave test that. It's always good to know what you have. Uh, no message, so capital C, call, O. I'm going to call the marble wand, marble, no message. They generally tend to be the less useful ones, so. Uh, okay, so we got hit by another fire trap. The other thing about fire traps is they will damage your max HP if you don't have fire resistance. So fire resistance is very important when you're going to be hitting a lot of fire traps. All right, I think we're ready to go down. I'm going to wear our um, armor again here, even though they could uh, 
get burned, it's fine. And uh, let's head on down. All right, so now we get to sort of these lava levels. Uh, so again, you don't have to levitate here. Uh, if you're careful and you don't mistype, you can just walk around. Uh, probably worth levitating though, just so you don't you know, fat finger your way into the uh, into the lava. But I'm I'm going to be a little careful here, so I think I'm just going to walk around and uh, just make sure I don't step in the water here or lava rather. Um, potion blindness, we'll pick that up. Getting burdened here, so let's put away some things. We'll put away these boots of levitation, these potions, that ring. I guess the marble wand, our spare wand of digging, spare wand of lightning, wand of, the wands of sleep, um, this extra magic marker. Put all those away, and we should be unburdened now. Okay, I'm going to just check out these piles here. Uh, another potion. I think that's all we care about over there. I think I will check out the amulets and the uh, scroll. So in, in 3.7, I heard they recently added a feature where strong creatures can knock you back, which would be very dangerous, particularly in this kind of level where a fire giant might knock you back into lava. It's going to make uh, levitation that much more uh, important. Ice boxes are interesting. I don't know if we've seen one before, but um, they're full of corpses. Uh, so they can be a good way to get resistances if you haven't gotten them already. Like we could use this to get poison resi resistance from the soldier ant corpses or fire resistance from the fire giant corpses or fire ant corpses. We don't actually need any of those. So again, I'm going to just be careful here, not uh, walk into lava. That one teleported away. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this potion. And this amulet, and then this scroll. All right. Put these away. And I think I do want to enchant my sword. So we we have a plus one Excalibur. I usually like to get my Excalibur up to plus six or plus seven. Um, I think that's definitely worthwhile. Let's see how many scrolls we have right now. Uh, we just have one Uncur Scroll of Enchant weapon and a scroll on it, sort of unidentified or, or unbuc tested scroll of enchant weapon. I think I'd like to have a stack of them before I uh, worry about blessing them. So we could fast travel here. Um, that would probably be safer. Uh, so it doesn't have a safe path here. All right, there we go. All right, down to the next level. All right, again, another lava level. I don't think we care about any of these corpses or comestibles. Um, but we will check out these scrolls and potions on the way. The soldier ants. I'm starting to get hungry here, so it probably makes sense to go in and eat a fire giant just for the nutrition. And they're um, guaranteed, I believe, to drop a corpse. I saw that fire giant there, we'll eat it. All right, finished it. Didn't get any strength, though. Pick up this uh, potion. The way our scrolls and potions. Oh, there's got another enchant weapon. 
Yeah, so we're wrapping smolders. So this is that um, damage that we got. Fortunately, it damaged our mummy wrapping, which actually, um, so mummy wrap, the damage will only affect the armor class that's provided by the base item, not the enchantment. It won't affect the enchantment. And mummy wrappings actually give you zero AC. So it doesn't matter if you're wearing a unburnt or a burnt mummy wrapping, it's still going to give you um, zero base AC. We're just getting the plus three from the enchantment. If we got our high boots or our leather gloves uh, burned, we would have lost uh, a point of AC from that. Or we can go down here. I don't see anything else we're terribly interested in. So Andrew, Andrew finds it interesting that there was an ice box on the lava level. Well, the fire giants need a place to keep their snacks. So. Through clouds of sulfurous gases, you see a rock palisade surrounded with a moat of bubbling lava. You remember the description from something that the Norns said. This is the lair of Lord Surtur. And here we are. So there's a castle here. Um, in the very center, Lord Surtur is sleeping. Um, the castle has drawbridges, so the dangers that, that we talked about of getting smashed by the drawbridge at the castle apply. Uh, in fact, that's one of the most dangerous things about the Valkyrie quest. And then there's lava everywhere. So um, we're going to try and make our way over there. I think we'll try and check out these items as well. And we'll see if we can't wake up Lord Surtur without um, having to worry about the drawbridge. I could be levitating here. It's probably not a terrible idea. The other thing that level levitating does is it gives you the option to levitate over the lava to heal. Lord Searcher, although being a fire giant, will not um, will not go into the the, the lava. So uh, you can actually escape from him and heal up by levitating over the lava. You can fight these fire giants in this choke point here. Probably not necessary, but a oh, potion of healing. The way these potions. And we'll check out these. Another enchant weapon. Nice. So we probably have enough enchant weapons that we should be able to um, bless a bunch of them. Let's actually take a look here. We have um oh we we have like two that stacked and one that didn't. So these two are probably uncursed, and then this one is either cursed or blessed. But until we get to a altar, we won't be able to tell which it is. So I think we'll hold off. And when we go back to our to an altar, we'll figure that out. All right, so we did uh just there, let me do control P. So we just stepped on a squeaky board. So I believe we woke Lord Searcher up, uh, which is good actually. Um, because we want him to come to us. I'm actually sure. All right, so that one has a wand of magic missiles. Could step back here, um, just fight them at a choke point here so we don't have to fight them all at the same time. We're down about 20 HP. You don't have to kill all these giants, but, um, all right, so there's probably a stack of boulders here, here, and here. So here I'm going to actually zap our wand of striking just to destroy all these boulders, and that's going to make it uh, easier. Looks like we didn't wake up Lord Sutra here. So if we look right here, we'll see there's a lower drawbridge. So this and the the fire giants often have wands. So this can be really dangerous. If you just step on there, if you just step on there or even are levitating over that, and one of these giants has a wand of striking, that can really be an instant death. So my suggestion is that you um 
you don't even go in there. And it looks like Lord Stitcher is awake. See, uh, he picks up a glass orb, and the, which is the Orb of Fate. That's the quest artifact that we're looking for, uh, one of the things we're looking for. So now that he's awake, we can actually just, just step back and let him come to us. Um, there he is. So Lord Searcher suddenly appears. So he teleports to you. And uh, he'll, he'll attack you. So the Norn has finally sent a Valkyrie to challenge me. I thought that mastering the Orb of Fate would enable me to challenge Tyr, but it has shown me that first I must kill you. So come, little sister. Once I defeat you, I can at last begin the final battle of the tier. So I think this might be the first Covetous creature that we're going to fight. Um, and let's see what it says. Um, So covetous enemies means that they will um, they steal things, <laughs> but more importantly, they have uh, they have an ability to teleport to the stairs and heal up. Um, so they they'll teleport next to you, attack, and then when they get damaged, they'll warp to the upstairs to heal. Uh, so that that can be really annoying, uh, and if you try and fight them sort of out in the open, you can often just get whittled down uh, over time because they will go to the downstairs, heal up, and they'll teleport back to you and attack you again. So you can fight, you can fight them, but uh, the, the, really the thing that you want to do is, is get to the upstairs before them. Um, I'm actually going to attack him a couple of times here. Well, actually, we have another option. Lord Surtur, I think, has a low or or no magic resistance. Let's see. That's 50. So it's actually, it's non-zero. Uh, so it does have a 50 magic resistance, but can be affected by wands here. So let's actually use this wand of sleep named minus four. The one that's closest to empty. Um, use that up first. So the, the sleep ray hits him, bounces, and hits him again. So now, now that he's asleep, we can um, hit him a few times. And he won't teleport away because he's asleep. And uh, that's actually worked out really well. The fact that it hit him, hit him twice. A look of surprise and horror appears on Lord Searcher's face. No! The orb of fate has lied to me. I've been misled. Suddenly, Lord Searcher grasps his head and screams in agony, then dies. So that made that combat um, a lot easier. You can also do potentially polymorph or uh, wanted death. There are other ways you can deal with with um, quest nemeses who don't have a high magic resistance, but um, wands of sleep are, are, are particularly good. We're going to go on to his corpse, and there's two things that we're looking for here. A glass orb named the Orb of Fate and a silver bell. The silver bell is uh, the bell of opening. It's one of three artifacts that you need for doing a ritual to win the game. So that's sort of like one third of the way toward uh, what we need to win the game, basically. Uh, and then we have the glass orb named the Orb of Fate is our quest artifact, and it's one of the most powerful artifacts in the game. Um, So it acts as a crystal ball. We'll actually use that ability later on. You can use that to find staircases or uh, magic portals. It gives you warning when it's carried, and then it gives you half spell and half physical damage, both. So basically, it in effect doubles your hit points because pretty much every source of damage is going to be reduced in half by, by the Orb of Fate. So instead of 205, we have 410 HP in effect, which is really, really strong. It acts as a luck stone. So I think we talked about this before. If you gain or lose luck, so if you're at negative luck or positive luck, you will return to zero luck over time. 
unless you have a luck stone. So if you have a a, a blessed or uncursed luck stone, then if you have positive luck greater than zero luck, then you're going to maintain that luck. Um, and also, a blessed luck stone will give you plus three on on top of that. Luck affects everything, so it affects to hit. It affects a lot of other things like prayer. Generally, it's it's pretty good to have. Um, it also has an an, invo an an ability you can invoke it to level teleport, which is also very very strong. So, um, and that, which I may or may not. Uh, we do have a, a teleport control ring, so I'll try and show that off as well. Yeah, so Orb of Fate is really really good. So we're gonna pick these things up. Oh, another thing to point out out though, the Orb of Fate weighs 150, um, which is a lot. Uh, so I think it's more than our armor. And it's going to make us burdened here, almost certainly. Yes, we're burdened. As you pick up the Orb of Fate, your mind is suddenly filled with images, and you perceive all of the possibilities of each potential choice you could make. As you begin to control and channel your thoughts, you realize that you must return the Orb of Fate to the Norn immediately. All right, so we're burdened. Um, that is expected. I'm going to put as much as I can into my bag of holding here to see if we can't get uh, unburdened, but it may not be possible. Um, I drop this wand of light. Maybe drop the wand of magic missiles too. Put away the secret door detection. Um, put away this other wand of sleep. We'll drop the looking glass at this point. Magic marker doesn't need to be in our inventory. This lamp is empty, so we'll drop that. Um, all right, so that didn't work. We're still burdened. I'm going to drop a few things here, though. We'll drop the Wand of Light. Mag magic Missiles, because I think that was zapped quite a lot. Anyway, and we'll drop the Looking Glass as well and the lamp that's empty. All right, unencumbered. There we go. I think these are both squeaky boards, so it's fine. Let's step on it again. I guess I'll check out this scroll just in case it's something really good. Chant armor is pretty good. So we're going to get back to an altar and do a little bit of inventory management next. Because we want to um, utilize the scrolls we found. All right, go back up again, and I use fast travel here. I should, you know, definitely should be doing that more. Because we see monsters around us, it's not going to work perfectly. But. It's going to prevent us from accidentally fat fingering our way into lava. Oh, so here is a case where fast travel is not going to work. So fast travel won't work if you don't have a clear path that's un unobstructed by a trap. So here, you don't have a clear path between the staircases because there's a trap in the way. So we have to step on this trap. Um, you hear a soft click. So that that was a like a arrow trap or something that was empty. Oh, and again, the fast travel failed here because it it couldn't figure out the path because there's that um, fire trap in the doorway, the cave entrance. A dwarver's metal coat would would have been nice if we. We, if we didn't already have one. So here's that fire trap. Oh, we might actually get something damaged here. Yeah, our gloves smoldered. So now our gloves are providing us with a zero AC instead of one, which is a little unfortunate, but gloves are there pretty much just to protect you from cockatrice corpses. Um, and it's really the, the enchantments that are going to make the difference in your AC more than the, the base AC of your accessory armor. It's very hard to keep your your armor from getting burned anyway, because you're gonna hit a bunch of fire traps. 
throughout the game. Yeah, Andrea says the Orb of Weight is the uh, Orb of Fate's nickname. It weighs so much. I should be, um, sorry, I should have been levitating there. Just so I don't fall into the water and lose all my nice scrolls that I've picked up here. All right, so we have to go talk to our quest nemesis. So I'm going to go walk over to him. Here's a Zorn. We'll kill the Zorn. And let's go talk to the Norn. As you approach, the Norn rises and touches the Orb of Fate. You may take the Orb of Fate with you, Over explained. I have removed from it the power to foretell the future, for that power no mortal should have. Its other abilities, however, you have at your disposal. You must now begin in Tyr's name to search for the amulet of Yendor. May your steps be guided by Tyr, my daughter. So the, the Norn lets us keep the, uh, the Orb of Fate to aid our quest. And we'll go back through the portal here. And then I'm going to go down to level 13. Better move our ring of levitation. And we're going to go to the altar here and do some uh, BUC testing. We're going to kill, I guess we have to kill this incubus now. Yep, do. Okay, go back to the altar. Uh, make sure you're not levitating here. This is a mistake I made before. If you are want to do some BUC testing, you're going to drop a bunch of things onto the altar. If you're levitating and you drop your potions, you're going to lose a bunch of potions. I've done that more than I'd like to admit. But um, we aren't levitating. I did take off my rent ring here. So I'm going to show you the series of key strokes you're going to use here to very quickly BUC test everything. So you're going to apply your bags, which I'm on B. O, take out. Shift X. Items of unknown, blessed, or cursed status. Enter. And then you just hit the period key, which is going to select everything. Enter again. If you have a little trouble, just continue yes. And hit escape. And now you have um, a bunch of stuff in your inventory, which is which you don't know if it's cursed or blessed or whatnot. So you can capital D, drop, capital X, enter, period again, enter, escape. And everything, and that, that's sort of the quickest way to do it. We probably didn't get everything out of the bag, so let's do this again. A, P, A, B, out, X, period, enter. Yes. I can escape past this. Again, capital D, drop, capital X, period, enter, escape. And uh, so we don't have a blindfold on, so we, we saw all these things. Looks like that's everything except for the leather gloves and the Great Dragon scale mail. So now we can just uh, comma, period, pick everything back up. Yes. And uh, we picked up, I think, most of it. Um, this uh, triangular amulet is not cursed. So if you find an amulet that's not cursed, you can just put it on. Um, it could be, you know, it could be something like an amulet of strangulation or sleep or something, potentially, but if it is something bad, you can take it off again. But it's likely to be something good, so I think it's generally pretty safe to put uncursed amulets on. I don't think we need these boots, elven boots anymore. I'm just gonna get rid of those. I'm trying to to clean out our inventory a little bit. Um, the boots of levitation are going back in. I think those are useful. Obviously, all these food rations can go back in. Um, <clears throat> we did get some blessed remove curse, which is great because that will fully uh, uncurse your entire inventory. Two blessed scrolls of charging. So we have uh, one uncursed enchant armor, one uncursed enchant weapon, two cursed enchant weapon. Um, so we take 
those, put those away. Uh, put all these potions away. So this is what you call inventory management, which is pretty much unavoidable. Um, pick up as much as I can here. So we've found some rings here, which are not cursed as well. So we can try those on. Uh, if you find rings which are not cursed, you can just try them on for for um, for a little bit of time. And some of them get our self ID. So like, for instance, this is a blessed plus one ring of protection. So that gives us another point of AC. And in, in addition, it gives us um, magic cancellation, which is really, really nice. So actually, just look at magic cancellation here. So you get um, Magic Cancellation 1, Magic Cancellation 2, or Magic Cancellation 3, which is going to protect you from a lot of attacks, which are pretty um, <clears throat> pretty annoying from creatures. So um, so things like Drain Level, Paralysis, like Le Le Lycanthropy, Slowing Attacks, Drain, drain Energy. Um, poison, etc. Like so special attacks from creatures are uh, resisted by magic cancellation. So if you have if you're completely naked, then the effects will happen all the time. If you have a little bit of protection, so that's like any kind of body armor at all, magic cancellation one, you'll resist it uh 30% of the time. If you have magic cancellation two, which is things like um Alpha mithril coats, etc. Then you'll resist it uh, uh, sixty percent of the time, and you have magic cancellation three, which is a, uh, from a cloak of protection or a combination of things that give you magic cancellation two and a ring of protection, which gives you another point of magic cancellation. Then you'll, you'll resist these kinds of effects. 90% of the time. So rings of protection are really nice uh, in terms of they give you an extra AC, but also um, and one or more AC, depending on their enchantment. But more importantly, they, they'll help you resist a lot of very annoying um, effects that you will get from monsters' attacks. So we, we figured that out. You can try on these other ones also, the opal, opal ring. Uh, so that one doesn't auto ID, so we'll remove it. The tiger eye ring, again, don't know what that does. Twisted ring, and the that's it. Put away these uh, scrolls and rings. Actually, I want to leave the scrolls out because I'm going to actually enchant my weapon and armor. Um, pick up the rest of this stuff. Okay. Um, put away these potions. So definitely don't want to put away the um, wand of cancellation. But uh, you know, don't need all these wands of digging right now. a bunch of wands and uh, I guess these tallow candles as well and we're still burdened so I'm going to take out some scrolls and potions here actually let's take a look we'll apply our bag and see what is cursed here um, we'll take out this cursed scroll of identify and the cursed potion of paralysis we want to keep some cursed and labeled scrolls for uh, writing cursed genocide and things like that 
Let's take out um, any enchant weapon we have. Take out any identify we have. Uh, we'll take out one blessed remove cursed curse here. And do we have any enchant armor? We have two potions of extra healing, so I think I'll hold off on blessing and drinking those until we have a bigger stack. I think that's all we have for um, scrolls of enchant armor. I think I probably read some. There's one actually here. We'll take that one too. Okay. Uh, do we have any other identify? All right, so we're going to read Remove Curse just to uncurse these two scrolls of enchant weapon because we want to stack these so we can bless them and use them to, to enchant Excalibur together. Uh, I don't think there's anything else we have that's cursed that we want to uncurse. So let's read that one blessed scroll of Remove Curse, and that's going to uncurse all these things. Now we want to stack enchant weapons together. Uh, so we can do that with the adjust command, extended command, and we're going to do P for uh, the, the two uncursed scrolls of enchant weapon, and P again, and that's going to stack them together. We can do the same thing with the identify, stack them together. Now we can take out the a couple potions of um, holy water. And we're going to dip the four scrolls of enchant weapon into the holy water. And now we can start to read them. So enchanting weapons is safe as long as your weapon doesn't have an enchantment of greater than plus five. So you can... Um, if you read enchant weapon and your weapon is already plus six or plus seven or, or, or higher, then there's a good chance that you're going to destroy your weapon. But if it's lower than pl uh, plus five or lower, you can read enchant weapon. So that's why you can get your weapon to plus six or plus seven safely. Because enchant weapon is likely to give you plus one or plus two if it's blessed. So we're going to go ahead and read uh, P. So Excalibur glows blue for a while, so it got from plus one to plus three, so we got two points there. So let's read another one. Uh, glows blue for a while again, so now we're up to plus five. So this is still safe, but this is the highest enchantment that's safe to read another enchant weapon. So again, we're going to read P. Uh, glows blue for a moment. And then suddenly vibrates unexpectedly. So that's, that's a message that tells you, okay, it's now at a point where you can't enchant it anymore, uh, or you're likely to destroy it. So we do actually have one more blessed scroll of enchant weapon, and we could use that to try and get up to uh, plus seven. Now, that means we need to get back down from plus six to plus five. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to step off of the altar. Do not engrave on an altar. Uh, that's a very bad idea. We're actually going to engrave with, uh, with Excalibur in the floor. And we're going to engrave one letter. So let's grave, engrave the letter X here. And you get uh, Excalibur gets dull. And so now we're back down to a plus five Excalibur. By engraving a single letter with a magical weapon, we've reduced its enchantment from plus six to plus five. And now we can read this blessed scroll of enchant weapon again. Uh, don't don't write a long sentence or something. You'll you'll dull it too much. But like a single letter is safe. And now we're going to read P again. Uh, and then Excalibur glows blue for a while and vibrates unexpectedly. And we got up to plus seven. So that worked out very well. Let's also read this blessed scroll of enchant armor. Um, I think we want to take off the armor which we might replace. So that like the helm, the gloves, the boots, and the mummy wrapping are all things that we might replace. The shield of reflection, the gray dragon scale mill, we're less likely to replace. So let's just remove uh, or take off with a capital T, the boots, 
the gloves, the helm, so uh, and the mummy wrapping. So now we're just wearing a plus zero shield of reflection, a plus one great dragon scale mail. So we can read this blessed scroll of enchant armor. And uh, we get plus one on our great dragon scale mail. And I'm going to hold off on this other enchant armor until we get a few more of them. And we can bless them together, and, and then we'll do a little bit more enchantment. We'll wear the rest of these. The armor again. And we're at two, uh, negative 17 AC here. Uh, Sartan Dragonbane says, hey, uh, I love the orb of weight. Welcome. It's very, very strong. It's a good wish if you're a neutral character, for sure. And uh, yeah, neutral wizard wishing, wishing for its great. It's like 9 out of 10 chance for cursed amulets to be the dangerous ones. Not completely unreliable. Yeah, so Sartan Dragonbane is pointing out the fact that Wearing amulets which are uncursed still has a chance, 10% chance that they're going to be something bad. It's not exactly that probability, but it's like the dangerous amulets have a 90% chance to be generated cursed, but still a 10% chance to be generated uncursed. But the other good thing about it is you can put those amulets on, and then if they are a bad one, like strangulation or sleep or something, you can just take them off again. So if, if you suddenly start falling asleep or if the amulet starts to strangle, you just can take it off. I think there's a amulet of change, which is like change you from change your gen your gender from male to female. I mean that's not like a bad thing. Or like a Valkyrie from female female to male. But you know that could also happen. It doesn't really have too many game effects. Um so probably not worth worrying about. So we're going to also bless our Scrolls of Identify. We're going to dip three Scrolls of Identify into our other Potion of Water. Um, let's put away Disenchant Armor, Potion of Paralysis, uh, Wand of Great Monster, Hold. I'm just trying to clear my inventory a little bit here because now we have three Blessed Scrolls of Identify, so I want to take out... A bunch of stuff to try to ID them. So this octagonal amulet. Um, we'll take out one of these scrolls that we don't know what it is. Take out some uh, an assortment of potions that we don't know what they are. And we'll take out all these rings. Actually, I have two tiger eye rings. So we could drop one into a sink to uh, identify it as well. And we'll see what we can, if we can carry, uh, take some of these wands out as well. So, wands that like we use for escape, like digging, are very good to know how many charges they have. Um, fire could be useful to know how many charges they have. Sleep. And this magic marker would be very, very useful to, to ID as well. So we might not be able to carry all of these. Again, you can only carry 52 items in your inventory. So basically, A to Z and then capital A to capital Z. All right, we, we were able to carry all those, so... Um, Take a few more things out here. Probably some more wands. Um, striking. All right. And then, it, then you get that message there. Your knapsack cannot accommodate any more items except gold. So that means you, you have 52 items in your inventory. Jonas uh, Small says, I accidentally, accidentally blew up my orbital weight in a bag of holding accident. That, that always hurts. And then Sartan Dragonbane says, I used to dev for an online text-based adventure game, a mud. We trolled one of our regulars by scattering his belongings into arbitrary nested levels of the equivalent bag of holdings. I had to spend some hours going through the nesting structure to get all this stuff. 
Oh, okay. I can see how that could be annoying for sure. Um, okay, so we're going to read these scrolls of identify here and just hope for a full ID. And we got one. Excellent. So we got a ring of shock resistance. That could be useful. Reactions, really useful. Well, it's, it's nice. Uh, it protects us against paralyzation, being, paral par uh, being paralyzed by uh, things like shades or potions of paralysis. Okay, ring conflict is really, really good. Um, we'll talk about that, but that's going to make a lot of our big battles a lot easier, causing the monsters to attack each other instead of you. Ring of teleportation along with teleportation control is nice. A wand of nothing does, as it says, nothing. Okay, just telling us how many charges we have here. Uh, wand of sleep. So there's an amulet of change, so that will change your uh, change you from male to female um, with the the small number of game effects that has. Not being you know not being able to lay eggs or whether an incubus or succubus uh, tries to use their seduction attack, but very small differences really. Increased damage. Oh, so we're wearing magical breathing that lets us uh, breathe underwater. So that magic marker had 54 charges, which is sort of on the lower end. Destroy armor. So that was booze. We have a potion of gain ability. That wand to sleep is empty. Oh, nice. We identified full healing. So potions of full healing are really, really useful. And you should uh, hoard them and, and collect as many as possible. And there's the bill of opening. Excellent. So we got the full ID quickly, which is lovely. So let's go ahead and put, put a bunch of things away. Um, I don't think we're going to use any of these right now. Um, we're going to put conflict away, but we're going to keep in mind that we have it. And we'll probably end up using it in a few situations pretty soon. So conflict is an extremely powerful effect, but also makes you hungry a lot quicker. Quicker, So powerful rings like conflict and regeneration will make you lose nutrition at a much greater rate. So like normally, if you would lose um, one point of nutrition every, say, 20 rounds with a ring of conflict or ring of regeneration, you lose a point of nu nutrition every round. So in, in effect, it increases your rate of get, getting hungry by a factor of 20. Um, we probably will put free action on because I think it's worthwhile to wear. Along with a ring of protection, we could ever wear shock resistance until we get shock resistance. Um, I think we'll go for a free action here. All right, I'm going to put away every wand of digging except for the one that has the lowest number of charges, so we can use that up first. So we'll put away these wands of fire. We're going to drop the wand of nothing, and we'll drop the empty wand of sleep as well. I think we're unencumbered, so we're going to drop a couple of wands here, the wand of nothing, and the empty wand of sleep. And we're ready. Uh, we've done the quest. We have the orb of fate. We have the bell opening. Um, so we are ready to go down to the Valley of the Dead. So we're going to make our way down there. Um, get him fast travel. This is a tiger, so um, yellow Fs. Tigers do a lot of damage, but at this point in the game, with our hit points and AC, this shouldn't be a big deal. We find them a little, uh, at a lower level. Do be aware that tigers can do a lot of damage. Let's actually show off uh, teleport control here. So again, we're going to do overview. So it's shift three, overview. And we're going to just look here. We're at level 14. And the castle is at level 27. 
So we can go ahead and teleport to level 27 using our um, teleport control and our orb of fate. And let me show that off. So we're going to apply our bag of holding and take out a ring or take out teleport control. Teleport control is another one of those rings that I believe makes you hungry faster. Actually, that might not be true. Now that I think of it. I think it's only teleport control. I should actually look in the nutrition. I think that will actually have a list. Yeah, it's um All right. Every 20 turns you lose one point of nutrition. For each ring you wear, you um you, okay. All right, so you lose a point of nutrition every turn. Um, you lose an additional point of nutrition every 20 turns, so like one out of 20. An additional 5% of nu nutrition is lost for each ring you wear and each amulet that you're wearing. And then each turn, you lose one, one point of nutrition if you're generating conflict. If you have hunger, which would be if you're wearing a ring of hunger, and then Every other turn, you lose a point of nutrition if you have if you if you have regeneration. Okay, so it's really rings of conflict double your rate of nutrition loss, and rings of regeneration increase your your nutrition loss by fifty percent. Uh, Zen Burning asks, still no slow digestion ring. I think they're not necessary to be honest. I think. Maybe in, with certain character classes and play styles, slow digestion could be useful. So slow digestion will actually negate the point, point of nutrition you lose each round. You still lose one point every 20 turns because you're wearing a ring, but it's going to make you basically lose nutrition 1 20th at a rate of 1 20th as anything else. I think I used to like rings, rings of slow digestion a lot, but as I started to speed up a little bit in the game, um, I don't like them as much, particularly because eating monsters and gaining intrinsics is so important. And if you have rings of slow digestion, you're often going to be satiated um, and unable to eat things uh, to, to gain those intrinsics. So I would actually say that it's fallen down to kind of undesirable in most cases for me. Yeah, but we're going to go ahead and um, put on the teleport control. So capital P, put on R. We're going to put on the ring of teleport control. And, and we have this orb of fate. I'm actually, because I'm going to use it a good deal, I'm actually going to adjust it. Capital Y, I'm going to adjust it to capital O. And then we're going to invoke it. So that's another extended command. So we're going to hash or pound I for invoke. We're going to invoke capital O. And then it's going to ask us, to what level do you want to teleport? Because we're wearing teleport control, we get to choose. And we want to go to level 27, which is where the castle is. I'm going to type in 27. And boom, we're taken all the way to the castle. So that, that saves you a lot of time, um, which is great. <laughs> Sam Burning says, me very noob, me like slow digestion. I would say slow digestion is great, particularly if you're doing something like altar. Well, yeah, I feel like you're altar camping. So um, often with character classes like tourists or weaker classes, I might altar camp for a while, which means you stay at an altar. You're going to be um, killing a bunch of things for death drops, but basically just doing a lot of you know N99S, waiting for things to come to you. You kill them. You offer them or sacrifice them on the altar to uh to get various gifts from your god and also you're going to get whatever whatever things they they drop you can also pray for um to 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 get nutrition back if you're weak so you basically stay an altar forever and a ring of slow digestion would actually help help that kind of uh, strategy as well i right, so we're ready now to um where are we? We're over here. Ready to go. I'm going to take 
a little careful here. Looks like there's nothing over there that it can uh, zap striking at us. Thanks a lot for the follow, Odie. M much appreciated. And um, and welcome. And we're ready to go down to the Valley of the Dead. And the Valley of the Dead is going to have tons of undead, as you might imagine. So um, genociding liches is probably probably uh, something you want to do. You might want to wait till you get down there before you do it, or you can do it before you go down there, which might increase the number of uh, wraiths that you find as well. So um, we're going to go down to the um, into the Valley of the Dead. But I think we're actually going to hold off on that until next episode. Um, I don't want to do too much of this in a in any given night, and I think this is a good stopping point. So we did the quest, and next episode we're going to do this. Um, actually, it probably won't be next Wednesday because I'm going to be on vacation, but it'll be the following Wednesday. Uh, but in general, I do this. I do net hack stream net hack every Wednesday night. Wednesday night. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so we're going to take a week off while I'm on vacation, and then I'll be back. And when we continue two weeks from today, I'll be doing the Valley of the Dead and um, probably starting Gehenna as well, which is sort of the end game. 